58, verses 32 through 35. Sing to God, you kingdoms of the earth. Sing praises to the Lord. Sing to the one who rides across the ancient heavens, his mighty voice thundering from the sky. Tell everyone about God's power. His majesty shines down on Israel. His strength is mighty in the heavens. God is awesome in his sanctuary. The God of Israel gives power and strength to his people. Praise be to God. Thank you. 
worship the King who is worthy. I will love Him, adore Him, and I will bow down before Him. I will sing to and worship the King who is worthy. And I will love Him, adore Him, and I will bow. day we do live our life for you father every day of our lives we just ask your blessings on this service lord uh, and for the new life for girls and wall as he delivers a devotional lord uh just guide us through this week to come lord and and give us your blessings in every way you can in jesus name we thank you for all you do for us amen good morning it is good to have you with us this morning and just a little bit I, the New Life for Girls Singers, I call you. I don't know if you're a choir or not, but uh, we will welcome you up. But uh, I was thinking about something that I saw in a newsletter that came out from New Life for Girls, and it got me thinking in a way that I don't think I've connected some dots. The scripture that I saw was 2 Corinthians 5, 17. How many of you know that scripture? I'll start it off. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature, new creation. Old things are passing away. Behold, all things are becoming new or become new. And I was thinking about that text. And it didn't dawn on me when I learned that text so many years ago, that it was connected to a larger context, that when I looked at the larger context, I went, wow. And for several years, I had been challenged to look at the verse just before verse 16. Most people don't even know there is a verse 15 before verse 16 because of the way we've learned the text. But I want for just a moment, I wanted to share with you some thoughts that I've got about how wonderful Jesus is. Uh, the text, uh, first, 2 Corinthians 5 starts out, maybe I said 1 Corinthians, I'm sorry, I think I said 2 Corinthians 5, starts out this way, and we know if the earthly tent, which is our house, is torn down, we have a building from God not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. And I thought, that's connected to if anyone be in Christ, he or she is a new creature. And I said, well, what's that Greek word mean? And when I saw the Greek word, I went, wow, wow, wow. Because that Greek word, if this house, which is our body, is torn down, that torn down Greek word, or that's translated in English that way in my text, torn down, means to disintegrate, to demolish, or to destroy. Now think about that for a minute. Those three words, and and there's much more that could be said about that Greek word or that's translated from the Greek, but I thought about that and I said, you know what? We are in a constant state of one of those things. Part of it is natural happened in the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve sinned and our bodies began to decay. We also have, confr- uh, we are confronted with the world and what it wants to do to destroy the Christian message in our lives. But uh, we also recognize that there is spiritual warfare going on and that spiritual warfare, maybe through the world, wants to destroy us. One of the things that I realized that was so beautiful and what you beautiful ladies bring to us this morning is a statement that Jesus trumps the tearing down and I want to read just a portion of the text to bring ourselves into that text and it says it says this 
Um, verse 14, for the love of Christ controls us, having concluded this, that one died for all, therefore all died, and he died for all that they who should that, that they who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died and rose again on their behalf. Verse 16 says, Therefore, from now on, we recognize no man according to the flesh, even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creature, she's a new creature. I thought about several things. One is, how often we recognize people according to their flesh, their past. Somebody stands up and gives a vibrant testimony, and we learn they are a, a malicious bank robber in their past. And we go, oh. But the church says, oh, we don't recognize anybody according to the flesh anymore. What Jesus is doing in your heart, that is what we recognize. And that's what the church says amen to. We are not a place, a hotel for the holy. We are a hospital for the hurting. And... I thought about this fact. How do you change if our earthly bodies are destroyed or are in disillusion or are being dismantled? However that happens. I recognized that as we serve Christ, we are being built up in the midst of destruction that's going on around and in, in us due to sin. So how do you reverse the process we simply learn how to serve Jesus more in the midst of those things that are going on around us. And then I said, thank God for new life for girls. And I want to say to you, welcome. And I want to say to you, happy anniversary new life for girls. 50 years and we're still counting. Would you come and sing for us and the Lord bless you as you do that? Um, I am Rebecca. I am the choir director at New Life for Girls. Um, things are a little bit different for us today. For a number of reasons, we're down a few girls. Um, that's why there's a little confusion with how we're standing because I am actually going to stand up here and sing with them instead of standing down there to lead them this morning. Um, I'm going to share a little bit about the ministry with you, and then the girls will introduce themselves. Um, we'll share today in song and testimony. Um, so New Life for Girls is a 12 to 18 month faith-based residential program for women and women with children. Um, we're one of the only programs we know of that allows the women to have their children with them while they're getting the healing that they need. Um, we don't only house those with drug and alcohol addictions, but we take those who have eating disorders, uh, cutting disorders, abusive situations, homelessness, um, really any life controlling issues. Um, we take in women who are lost and broken and need to know the love of the Lord. Um, I don't, is Fran Martin here this morning? <laughs> Hi, so, I, so I was, I've been told that Fran is our connection to this church. Um, and I actually just met her yesterday, but um, one, when, when they said her name, I was like, I, I know this name. Why do I know this name? And I realized, I think after you left, but I realized that the reason that I know her name is because one of the girls who graduated from our program in October said her name every time she gave her testimony um, because she was in Bradford County Prison um, and met Fran there. And... Um, so one of the things we want to say to you individually and to you guys as a church is thank you for your investment in our ministry. Um, you might not know how far it goes when you, the way that you treat the lost and the broken and the things that you do for them. Um, you might not get to see it beyond whatever you do in that moment, but please know that it goes so much farther than you can imagine. Um, we got to watch it go from Bradford County Prison to uh, finding God to 
graduating from our program and living for the Lord. So um, our program is not government funded at all. It is um, completely faith-based. So everything we have from the food we eat, the, some of the clothes that they wear, um, money to pay the bills, all comes from donations from churches and families like you guys. So thank you. Um, thank you for having us here today. Um, when the women enter the program, they enter through one of our four introduction centers. Um, we have one in Chicago, Illinois, Fresno, California, Westminster, Maryland, and one in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Um, they spend about three to four months there learning about the Lord, taking classes, um, getting acclimated to the way things are done at New Life. Um, for some of the women, this is the first time that they pick up a Bible, the first time they've heard about the Lord at all, um, the first time they've ever prayed. So it's, it's big. <laughs> um, once they're finished with their classes at the introduction center, then they're sent to the main training center, which is in Dover, Pennsylvania, and that's where we're from today. Um, in Dover, they continue their classes for six more months. Um, they take Bible classes and life skills classes. Um, their day begins at 6 a.m. and ends at 10 p.m. Uh, it's very structured. Um, they have breakfast, they do chores, uh, they get ready for class, which starts at 8 a.m. Um, after class, they have chapel, which consists of prayers, devotions, songs, um, sometimes a speaker. After class, they have lunch. After lunch, they have more chores. Um, then they have a little bit of a break before they do what we call a work period, which is more chores. Um, then <laughs> after that, they have supper. The, um, then they have more chores. <laughs> um, then after that, they, um, they do a number of different things. Sometimes we have choir practice, um, a devotion service, study hall. Um, then 9.45, they have quiet time where they read their Bible and spend time with God. And then 10 p.m. is lights out. Um, after their six months of classes are finished, they enter what we call the Emmanuel phase. Um, this is where they seek the Lord for his guidance for their future. Some of the women are called to stay after graduation and give back to the ministry. Um, so the ladies will introduce themselves, but Amanda on the other end there is actually a graduate of the program. So she is now staff. Um, and thankfully, some of them still travel with us. <laughs> um, after the Emanuel phase, they go to their junior staff phase, um, and they walk alongside the senior staff and help wherever they're needed, um, and just kind of learn how to do the work in various departments of the ministry. Um, beyond that, we do have one more center in Glenrock, Pennsylvania, which is our mother and children center. So when mothers are finished with their classes, they can transfer to this center, um, and there they can get help getting a job, getting childcare, um, a car, housing, um, and it just really allows them to get back on their feet while staying under the covering of New Life for Girls. Um, graduation is coming up really soon. Uh, who's graduating? Darlene. <laughs> Darlene is graduating at the end of April. We have graduation twice a year, at the end of April and at the end of October. Um, and it's a really exciting time. They get to have family and friends come. Um, they can wear a full cap and gown and walk down the aisle. Um, yeah, so today we're gonna share with you in song and testimony. Before we do that, I'll have the ladies um, just introduce themselves. They'll tell you their name, their age, and what introduction center they came from. Hi, I'm Cassandra. I'm 27 years old. I'm from Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, and I came through the Westminster, Maryland Intro Center. Hi, I'm Ida. I'm 29. I'm from Oklahoma, and I came through the Dover in Intro. Hi, my name is Dolly. I'm 22 years old. I'm from West Virginia, and I went through the Westminster Intro. My name is Amanda. I'm 33. I'm from Halifax, and I went through the Dover Intro. Um, the first song we'll share with you is called Holy Water. God, I'm on my knees again. God, I'm begging, please, again, I need you. Oh, I need you. Walking down this desert road, water for my thirsty soul, I need you. Oh, I need you. Your forgiveness. Like sweet, sweet honey on my lips Like the sound of a symphony to my ears Like holy water on my skin Dead. 
Dead man walking, slave to sin. I want to know about being born again. I need you. Oh, I need you. So take me to the riverside. Take me under baptized. I need you. Oh, I need you. Your forgiveness is like sweet, sweet honey on my lips. Like the sound of the symphony in my ears. Like holy water on my skin. I don't want to abuse your grace. God, I need it every day. It's the only thing that ever really makes me want to change. I don't want to abuse your grace. God, I need it every day. It's the only thing that ever really makes me want to change. I don't want to abuse your grace. God, I need it every day. It's the only thing that ever really makes me want to change. I don't want to abuse your grace. God, I need it every day. It's the only thing that ever really makes me want to change. Your forgiveness is like Okay, so like I said, um, my name is Amanda, I'm 33, um, I'm originally from Halifax, I'm a mother of three boys, 14, 10, and 8. Um, I grew up in a really broken home, um, I have two brothers, one's older and one's younger, um, so I'm the only girl. Um, so at a very young age, um, about four or five, I suffered some sexual abuse in the home, so I was taken from my month from my parents and was given to my grandparents for most of my life until about 16 when um, my grandfather got very ill with cancer, um, leukemia, and then I had to move away and go back to live with my mom. So that took a big toll on me because I got really close with my grandparents and I kind of like looked at them as mom and dad because that's who raised me most of my life. So I took that really hard. Um, so when I moved back in with my mom at the age of 16, I kind of ran the streets and did what I wanted. So at 17, I got pregnant with my son. And um, I met a guy and got pregnant with my son and um, kind of just ran wild. And, and then at seven, I had to move back home because I was pregnant and I needed help. I couldn't raise you know, a kid on my own at 17. So at, I dropped out of high school and you because know, I didn't want to be pregnant in school, and, you know, the guy was like, just drop out, it'll be all right, you know, I'll take care of you. Yeah, that was the worst mistake. So at 18, I had my first son, and that didn't work out. He was one whenever he kind of was just, like, was out of the picture and left my son and I. So I was, you know, a single mom trying to raise a kid on my own. My mom was helping me. So at about 19, 20, I met another guy, and he kind of took my son under his wing and took care of me and him, and... I got pregnant with my second son. He's 10 now. 
but um, I got pregnant with him. So I moved out and moved in with him and start, tried to start a family. And, you know, I thought that was all going to be okay and work out. So I, when I moved out and moved in with him, he kind of took, under, took my oldest son under his wing and, you know, was like, I'll raise him, I'll take care of him, you know. And then my son started calling him dad and we thought that was his dad. So I thought everything was going to work out. So at 21, I, I ended up getting pregnant again when my other son, so they're only, my kids are only, you know, a couple years apart, so I got pregnant again. At 21, I got married and thought that, you know, that was going to all work out and be okay. Well, everything was okay for a couple years until he turned to alcohol and started drinking. Well, that was when things went really bad because he started drinking, so then we started fighting. Things weren't going good. You know, he started controlling who I could talk to, who I could hang out with. I wasn't allowed to have no friends. And I was like, no, this ain't going to work. So, you know, I would come home, and then the physical abuse started when he started drinking. So he was beating on me in front of my kids. And I'm like, okay, well, I thought this was all okay because I was looking for a man to fill the void in my heart of love because I didn't have the love of Christ. Well, if you don't have the love of Christ, then you don't have nothing because God is love, you know? So I was just looking for love in a man instead of looking for love in God because I had no relationship with God at all. So that all was okay until... Um, it was about 2000 and like 2018, 2017, I think it was like 2017, 2018. Um, I, I was my best friend. She was like, li she was living right next door to me and we were all hanging out and here she was having an affair with my husband. So she got pregnant to my husband <laughs> and had a kid with him. So I'm like, oh no, we ain't doing this. So we ended up getting a divorce. So that's what... That's where everything went south. So me and my son got thrown out and then like nine o'clock at night, just with the clothes on our backs and he kept my other two kids because he, did, he had them because they were the kids we had together, but he couldn't keep my oldest because that was my son. So we got, went and lived with my mom. This was in 2018, we went and lived with my mom and I was like, okay, so now I'm gonna, I just have one kid, I can just go and do whatever I want. Well, my mom was like, all right, just go do what you want. So I started partying. Well, that's when it turned to drugs, because I was trying to fill all the voids. So that went into, I met another man, and he was using heroin, so I turned to really bad heroin addiction. Well, that wasn't it either. Drugs isn't the answer. Jesus is the answer. <laughs> so that's when I found out that when I turned to drugs, I found a really nasty heroin addiction. So in 2019, I ended up in jail. Well, that's what saved my life. Jesus in jail. <laughs> So those two things is what saved my life. So 2019, I ended up in jail. It was February 2019. In, Feb in August of 2019, I came to New Life for Girls. And that's where I got saved, and I found the love of Christ. So then in October of 2000, I went through the whole program. I wasn't talking to, I, well, the whole time I was in jail, my mom really didn't want a relationship with me at all because of all the dirt that I caused. Because, like, I stole from her, I manipulated her, I lied to her, I left my son with her, and I was like, look, like, you can just take him. I don't want nothing to do with my kids. I'm going to do what I want. I'm going to just do, but run the streets. So I went to jail. My mom's the one that turned me into the cops. She's like, go get my daughter. Like, she's, she's killing herself. I had, like, five, six warrants out for my arrest. I just didn't care anymore. I was just broken, lost, and hopeless. So in February, I went to jail, and I'm glad that she did what she did, because now that I look back between my mom and them coming to pick me up, that saved my life, because if I wouldn't have went to jail when I did, I probably would be dead. I don't know. I don't know. I just, I really, really think that God had his hand upon me the whole entire time through my mess, because he has a plan and a purpose for my life, and I see that now looking back, because I have complete restoration with my mom now, I mean, yeah, she lives in California with my children because that's where her and my stepdad relocated to because his family lives out there. But I see my, my youngest son, I see him every other weekend he comes to New Life to spend the weekends with me. When, and, and now I just like, the Lord's really blessing me. Like, I have my own place on the mountain. I stay and work as staff now. I graduated in October of last year. And I just, I'm really blessed to be here and be a part of this. And I just thank you guys for having us. next song we want to share is called My Jesus. Are you past the point of weary? Is your burden weighing heavy? Is it all too much to carry? 
scary. Let me tell you about my Jesus. Do you feel that empty feeling? The shame of all the stealing. And you're desperate for some healing. Let me tell you about my Jesus. He makes a way where there ain't no way. Rises up from an empty grave. Ain't no sinner that he can save. Let me tell you about my Jesus. His love is strong and his grace is free. And the good news is I know that he can do for you. Hi, like I said before, my name is Dolly. I'm 22 years old, and I'm from West Virginia. Um, <clears throat> I grew up in a loving family that loved me and cared for me, and I had a awesome parents. Um, and two when I was seven, no, 15, my mom had a stroke. And it was, uh, I thought I lost my mom forever. And then about seven, in 2017, I lost my, my dad at, with COPD. Um, he was my best friend and I thought I lost him forever. So I was, I started, smoking weed and drinking alcohol after I graduated from high school. And um, my family let me do whatever I wanted just because I lost my dad. Um, I started doing whatever I wanted. I got, I stayed out outside over like all night. Like 
I didn't care. <laughs> Because I didn't. I didn't care about my family. I just wanted to stay away from them just because they looked like my dad. But I came into the program of 2022, and um, it's been an awesome ride. I got, I'm having a good relationship with my mom that I thought was completely gone forever. But she's it's like we never grew apart and I have full restoration of my brother and um, since I've been here I've been really growing I can my sister sees it in me all the time and I graduate at the end of this month and I just want to say thank you for pouring, like donating a lot of stuff to us. And if you have anyone out there that you love, send them to us. We love on them no matter what. The next song we'll share is called I Won't Go Back. Thank you, God. And I decided to come to New Life, and everybody was like, well, how are you going to stop smoking? I'm like, for him. Like, I'm not going to do it for myself because I can't do it for myself. I have to do it for him. And I came into the program. I didn't go through any nicotine withdrawals, which is amazing. Um, and since I've came into this program, I have, like, full restoration with my mom. Me and her did not talk the whole time I was in my mess because she didn't want me to mani manipulate her, use her, or anything like that. She was just like, no, I'm not talking to you. And now, tomorrow, she's getting me, and we're going out for my first sober birthday in a very, very, very long time. And I'm so happy and blessed for that. Um, but my children, um, three years I was out there on the streets trying to do it in my own free will to get my kids back in my life to the point of I was driving myself to death. And... Three months being in this program, God handed my kids to me, and I don't have them physically with me, but they're right here, and I get to talk to them. I'm writing letters, and I told the one gentleman, I was like, God knows he has to go slow with me, because if I get all that I need, then I'm going to slowly start walking away. So he knows I'm going to give her step by step. First, it's going to be writing her, 
writing my children, and then phone calls, and then visitation, so it's an easy process, and also I need to get the healing, you know, I need the healing because I don't want to go see them and just start bawling my eyes out, I need to be healed and hold to see them so I can just love them correctly the way that God loves me, and I love New Life for Girls because really we come into this program and we don't know just, we don't know the aspect of God completely. We might have a little bit of knowledge about him, but to really come into this program and sit there and just absorb God, that's all we're doing every single day. Our classes, they're God-based. Like, it's just so amazing how much, it, how much improvement I have made. And I'm just so looking forward to what God's gonna take me to. I do plan on staying with the ministry, because this place has done a lot for me and I just want to get back to them but I also want to go to Florida where my kids are so I'm thinking maybe in God's will making an intro down there so more women can come in from down there but you know by the grace of God and his will in my life but thank you guys the last song we want to share is the blessing
favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children. His favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children. His favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children. Thank you again for having us here today. Um, we're looking forward to getting to know some of you after the service. Um, if you have any questions about 
the ministry or our lives, anything you want to know, <laughs> feel free to ask. I also have information about the ministry um, if you are, if you know somebody who you think might benefit from it, um, please see me. I'd be happy to hand you some flyers or anything like that. Um, thank you again. I want to say thank you for the ministry that you shared with us about Jesus. And Cassandra, you have a birthday. I think it would be appropriate for us to say and sing to you, happy birthday. Could we do that? Let's, let's all stand up and sing happy birthday to Cassandra because she may have missed having someone sing birthdays to her. So we can all make up for that. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Cassandra. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. You may be seated. I was thinking about something that I'm going to ask of you. Years ago, when we would have special groups in to sing, and I say we, meaning as a, my, my experience in churches long ago, of yesteryear, of, is that we take a special offering. I recognize that we could do something very special over the next week. I realize that Fran, Fran, where are you at? How many years were you in ministry to gals incarcerated? 31 years. I was thinking that we could, we could double bless this morning and maybe coming into next week as well to in honor of Fran's 31 years of ministry to gals who were incarcerated. Could we in her honor receive, give to New Life for Girls. And how I would suggest we do that, if you have a check, you can write, uh, you can make it out to the church and write New Life for Girls in the memo. If you want to give cash, I would say, put it in an envelope, put it, mark it on New Life for Girls. But I would like us to double bless. We'll bless Fran to say thank you for how you brought Jesus to so many gals and how you introduced us to how we can bless an organization that is benefiting our world by helping gals get things straightened out in their lives. I think that would be great. So I don't know, maybe you want to do multiples of 31. You could do 131, maybe it'd be $31, maybe it'd be $62. I don't know what multiples you want to do, but could we do that over the next week? And I'm sure Carolyn would be happy to receive those checks and those envelopes with cash in it and then transfer it on to New Life for Girls. But I just want to say thank you. Deeply touched by recognizing how wonderful God is to work in all of our lives I thought about something else very interesting too. How many of us would stand on a stage, renumerate our life story before coming to Jesus, and want to celebrate how Jesus has changed our lives? That's really special. That takes some chutzpah in the spirit, and I thank you for doing that as well. We are, yes, not a hotel for the holy. We are a hospital for those who are sick and injured, and all of us benefit by ministering together in Jesus. Worship team, would you come forward for our last song?
never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. for the benediction, I want to remind you that after the meal, we'll, we'll be working on finishing our history day. We're going to look at the last three years. I invite you at, at some point to review the timeline, and there are some new additions on the timeline that may help with our memory and our thoughts as we move into that time. So just wanted to remind you of that. And please stay for the meal, share, get to know some of the gals, and uh, and we'll look forward to that time together. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for the way you redeem us. You told the prophet Joel that you would replace the years that the canker worm and the locust had eaten. And you, you have done that so graciously so many, many times. You've done it in my life. And so we celebrate, Lord, the testimony of what your grace does as we obey you, that your grace fills us to overflowing with the goodness of your love and your truth. Thank you for what we have heard today. Continue to bless it to our lives, and might we as well be a blessing to New life for girls as we honor the many years that Fran Martin has given to ministry to gals incarcerated. And Lord, bless the food that we're about to eat as we go to share together at a meal. Bless it to our body's good. And then continue to touch the day's activities as many of us who can stay will continue to work on understanding better our history.